Hello, do you want to add cool particle effects to your games? Awesome! I will show you how to do just that. To access the files for this exercise, click on the GitHub link in the description. On the shrapnel branch, click on code, and then download zip. Save to wherever location you need to save it, unzip it, and yeah, let's get going. Particle effects are bells and whistles that really enhance the quality and visual production of games. As demonstrated here, we will be working with three particles. A laser impact, enemy explosions, and uh, when the player dies. So what we have here is the sprite sheet we'll use for our particle effects. Each one is going to be five frames of animation, with this top one being the uh, when the player dies, the ship is going to blow up into a bunch of shrapnel pieces. This middle one is whenever a laser hits something. And then this last one is an explosion. So we've uh, made some changes to our master branch. Um, with these uh, shrapnel effects, we need to make some modifications. We'll start off in the, the player class. The first thing is whenever the player dies, the game would immediately exit. What we're doing is we're going to add an alive status. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to add an alive variable and then an, a timer so that whenever the player dies, it gives it time for the particles to, or the shrapnel to spread. We've added a function for death whenever the player dies. It's just going to change the flag from true to false and then it's going to initialize the alive timer. And then for each of the movement we need to make sure the player is alive so that well we don't want to be moving after we're dead do we? That'd be kind of creepy. So if alive is true then we can move. We've added a new file to be included in the game named include uh, shrapnel. <laughs> shrapnel is going to include the sprite sheet because we need to actually load the sprite sheet for the shrapnel. Whenever we, when, we, when we call the function to begin with we need to pass the shrapnel type as well as the location on the screen we want the shrapnel to appear. Shrapnel type has three states and we're going to store it into a variable where 1 equals the ship, 2 equals the laser, and 3 equals the enemy. And of course we're going to use animation frames. We're going to shove all five frames into the animation frames. And depending on what type it is, that determines where on the sprite sheet we're going to grab our images. So I'm using a simple loop here with a range of the start location and the stop location and the sh these uh, shrapnel are 8 pixels wide so we're going to step from 0 to 40 which is 8 times 5 and to get our 5 frames of animation. And pretty standard once we have everything loaded we're going to initialize the rect for the and set the x and y location. Each shrapnel has a force variable which controls how fast it's going to move across the screen and we're also going to use float variables for some fine movement as well as having an animation frame and an animation timer and delay and we can adjust this however we want to make the animations cycle through faster or slower and we handle that through the update function. So when the timer plus the delay is met we're going to go to the next frame of animation but depending on the type. So for the ship type we just wanted to pick a random frame from the set of five and uh, since we do a range of zero 
to 5, it's only going to pick 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4. It doesn't pick the last number in a range. Otherwise, we're just going to cycle the frame plus 1. So if the frame goes beyond number 4, we just reset it, and so that way it creates an animation loop. Now, if the, if the type is 2 or 3, which is the laser and the enemy explosion, we're only going to loop once. So it's just going to play all five frames, and then that's it. It's going to stop. <clears throat> and for our float variables, we're just going to apply the force, and then we need to convert our float to an integer and apply that to our rect, so that we have an integer for the screen location, because the screen location doesn't like floats. Then we're going to set our image equal to what the current animation frame. Then for our draw function, all we do is we place it on the screen at our location. In our main file, we've made some modifications to support our new particle effects. Since we've made a new file to include, we need to add it to our file includes, include shrapnel from the shrapnel class. The next thing we need to do is we need to create a group. Wow, shrapnel list. So this is a sprite group which works like our enemy and laser groups. A group of sprites allows more than just one. It allows many sprites to be on the screen. And since we want a lot of shrapnel, we need this to be a group. <clears throat> We've changed our game loop. Previously it was checking if the player was alive. And if the player was dead, the loop would exit immediately. We've changed it to an actual game loop flag. And while the game loop is going, well, the game loop is going. So that way when the player dies, we can we have more fine control of when to exit the game loop. So to actually add the particle effects to our game, what we need to do is we need to create loops of how many particles we want for each event. In this case, the player crashes into the terrain. <clears throat> so on a collision, we're going to check if our player is alive, and if so, we're going to add 72 pieces of shrapnel onto the screen. We want type 1 because type 1 is the, uh, the player ship, as well as the player location. Now for the force, we're just picking a range. We want this to be random because it, it'll blossom out. And I choose 40 because that's a pretty fast speed. And then I divide by 10, which will make it into a float. So between negative 4 and positive 4, anything in between, step by 0.1, that's how much, that's how fast each uh, shrapnel will fly out. And then, of course, we add the shrapnel to the list. <clears throat> After that, we call our new player death function. And that starts the uh, whole effect of player dies, shrapnel goes out, and then after a period of time, we'll exit the game loop. For the lasers, whenever a laser hits an enemy, we're going to do type 2, which is the laser shrapnel. And the laser, it just... Boop. And that's it. We don't need very much here, so we're only going to use 17. No, I'm sorry. So with, uh, with the laser, we're only going to use one, because we have one laser, and then for each bullet, boom. Okay. Next, when that, next we need the enemy to explode. So this is the explode shrapnel. And it's type 3 for the explode, and we're going to place it at the enemy location. Now the force, instead of going from negative 20 to... Or we're going to go from negative 20 to positive 20. So it's going to explode at half the speed of a player. Because when the player explodes, we want that to be a big dramatic effect. That's why we have 72 for the player, and only 17 for the enemy. <clears throat> because if we have too much for the enemy, every time we destroy an enemy, it's just going to clutter up the screen. 
Now when an enemy laser hits a player, all we're going to do is we're going to do, do the same thing as an enemy, or as the player hitting the train. We're just going to put 72 pieces of shrapnel of the enemy ship, and then we're going to call the player death. And finally, we're just going to call uh, shrapnel whenever laser hits terrain. So, type 2, laser location. I'm going to add the shrapnel, and then we're going to remove the laser. After that, we add our sprite group update. We just group it in with the enemy and the lasers. And then finally, we draw it on the screen. And I have it last on the list because we want the shrapnel to be on top of all the other sprites. That's it. And again, showing you this demo. So if you watch the lasers as uh, we fly around, and when we shoot the terrain, each bullet at the impact of the terrain immediately switches to the sprite of uh, the shrapnel. And then I crashed into the terrain, big explosion, period of time passes, player dot alive, and we'll check for player dot alive in a separate part of the game loop. Alright, so, if the player alive is false, we're going to check the player alive timer plus five seconds. After five seconds, the game loop is false. And that's it. That's all you need to do to make some cool looking effects. So for every enemy we destroy, it creates a big explosion. It's all magic. And of course, we get hit by a laser. We explode. Game over. Alright. I hope this helps you out. If you have any questions, let me know. Grab the files down in GitHub. Um, make sure to subscribe and like, of course. That helps me out. That'll help you out. Um, because you'll see whenever I release a new tutorial video. Um, I do coding live on Twitch. If you want to watch the entire creative process. And uh, you can join my Discord and ask questions there.